Hey, it's Sasha Evdikov. Welcome to the Stock Market Recap. It is October 29th, 2015, and this week's lesson is all about mentality. So we're going to talk about getting past mental hurdles, problems, and obstacles. So that's my goal of uh, this week's lesson. Now, this week's lesson is going to be a little bit shorter. Last week, I mentioned that um, I have a couple of things going on here this week, and uh, it's just keeping me a little busy and occupied. So I'm still going to try and do a little bit of a nice lesson for you uh, and just go over some of the stocks and how they're moving, acting, behaving based on what we were talking about this last week in the last recap. Now, if you haven't been to the website recently, remember that we do have the uh, Penny Stock book that's been released. Uh, quite a handful of people already have it. So uh, the Penny Stock book, uh, if you go to the tradersfly.com website and just go down to books and you should be able to see the Penny Stock book. So a handful of people already wrote me back saying that it's a great book, uh, very focused on those uh, less than $10 stocks. So if, if that's your trading area, if that's where you're focusing on, and those are the charts you want to study, because they move a little bit different. They do move a little bit different. And if that's your focus, uh, then this is really a great book for less than $15. You can you know uh, pick it up there and uh, really study and get a lot of value for or, you know what you're what you're getting out of it you can use it for the rest of your life all, all the knowledge all the insight all the charts you know it's yours when you have it it's yours to have to study to master to keep getting better and there's some insight as well into trading penny stocks so there's some good uh, lessons about that as well as why I would do the things that I would do when it comes to trading penny stocks versus the larger cap stocks or more pricier stocks so there's some insight in there it's not really a book book again it's a chart book and it is in black and white but you can still read uh, read the charts very well and uh, but it is a chart focused book so it's not like a storyline about how to trade penny stocks it's all about reading the charts focusing on charts and building your muscle memory your mentality to properly see these types of charts because they do move slightly different so in this week's episode, uh, my focus is really to discuss getting past the mental hurdles, problems, and obstacles. So you can say it's more of a podcast this week rather than a uh, recap on the charts, uh, which we might actually go ahead and do some podcasting in the future or just convert the uh, recaps into podcasting. I know some of you uh, said you had some interest in that to be able to listen to things on your way to work, on your way back from work um, as a podcast or just maybe as a an audio file. So if you're interested in that, even, you know, it, just go ahead and just send me a note, an email, a tweet, anything, just saying, hey, I would love to hear a podcast. And then we can go ahead and convert them and put them on there for you for free. Uh, but just, you know, take the initiative. Don't don't expect that other people are going to take the initiative and send in that they want the podcast. Uh, just go ahead, send me a quick little note. It'll take you five seconds. If you want it, then just let me know. And uh, we can go ahead and uh, I can have one of my assistants or helpers go for that and make the conversions to all the future podcasts or all the future uh, stock market recaps as well as all the previous ones. And then you can just listen to every single one of those as you're driving, on your subway, to work, whatever it is that you're doing. So let's get into a few stocks. I just want to talk about the stock charts themselves uh, and some of the stocks that we covered previously. And then we'll get into the lesson. So first things first, uh, let's just talk about the Dow Jones. And typically, those of you that have been following me for a while know and understand that Dow Jones is not the most important one that I watch, but um, I like to do it to uh, just get a good idea of the market uh, for other people because a lot of other people watch the Dow Jones. But looking at the Dow Jones, here's our critical line of support. You can see we had a, um, a swing point over here in this region right here. Then uh, we had a few over here and in these areas. We broke it right here, and then now we're back up in this area or region. Now, one thing you want to pay close attention, very close attention, is this region or area. So this whole region or area, we moved sideways for basically um, quite a long time. We moved sideways for, let's say, the last year. 
And once we're in this, which we are in this, um, as we come into this region, this could be a huge line of resistance. So be very careful as we approach this region. And it's not a one solid line, okay? It's actually going to be a little region. So you want to pay close attention to a range and the range right here. So as we get in here, there could be trouble because you can see that as we're coming into certain areas, let's say up here and up here, that these lines, they don't hit them perfectly. Just like if you meet your friend for dinner or for lunch, they don't always come exactly at noon or one o'clock. They are a minute early, minute later. Um, you know, they might meet you outside or inside. So there's a lot of variables and factors. And the same thing here in stocks. Everybody's always trying to buy it at the lowest point and sell it at the highest possible price. So we're all trying to do that. And the more you're trying to do that, the less things sometimes work out and sometimes things keep pushing higher. So uh, be mindful. So here in the Dow Jones, if you look at the SPY, um, SPY spiders, the same thing's really happening here. So we have a resistance line or region right here. You can see that little tight region. So if you're looking at a line, you're watching these two little lines. Really, ideally, you're watching the highest point of these lines right here. So that way you're not getting whipsawed out. But here we broke this critical line right here, this line of support right here or resistance. Support and resistance are the same lines. It just depends if the price is above or below it. So this line used to be line of resistance, but now we broke it right here. Now it becomes support. And you can see we were moving in the 200-day moving average, and then we bounced off of that. So now again, we're isolating, playing around, um, and that's the spiders. If we look at the composite, composite, so here, again, the same thing. And this is what the market is typically led by. The market is typically led by the composite. Okay, NASDAQ composite. This is where all the tech companies are. This is where all the um, the big boys are hanging out. And the composite's typically what you want to watch. This is what I really watch is this composite. So here, same thing. Everything's in alignment. So all three charts are working out well, uh, meaning they're all in congruence. And when charts are in congruence, the Dow, the S&P, the RUT, um, uh, the SPX, IWM, when all of them are doing the same kind of thing, that means everything is moving together. You're, you have four wheels on the road. Um, if one of them was telling you uh, something completely different, then that means the market isn't moving properly. And then there's some things you should be watching out for or some other things that maybe um, you should be prepared for, such as pullbacks, retracements, something's acting weak, depending on which one's acting weak. But for the time being, everything looks to be in alignment. Now, we are still in this region or range. And because we are in this region or range, um, you can see some sideways action. Uh, we are all we are already fairly extended from the lows of that bounce. And it's not something that I personally like. I would have personally liked that we um, sold off coming into this resistance area, like coming into here, and then I wish we would have sold off. And the reason for that is it just builds better charts. It builds better charts. When you have a nice sell-off, you can buy things at lower prices. And, you know, for me, I can trade them to the upside, to the downside. I, I just think things are a little extended, but that doesn't mean I won't trade them to the upside, like um, an Amazon. We've been trading Amazon to the upside the last couple of days, and uh, this is when we got in. We put on some longer positions, longer diagonals, um, got some stock, these kinds of things. So looking at this resistance line, you can see this has a stair-step pattern approach. But again, you take your profits as things continue to move up. Um, Apple had earnings as well, but I wouldn't trade this one or go long, and we have no position in this right now. Um, I would look for a position. Right now, I'm looking for a position, and I would get in it right here if it clears this on heavy volume. And the reason I would wait for that is, look at this line right here. This is the 200-day moving average, okay? And that line is right there. And also, we have the support and the resistance line. Really, it's resistance now right here. So everything is pointing right here in this little region or area. Now, that little region or area may actually come here, and it may 
it it may happen right here. It may happen later. It may happen over here. The stock may come up, sell back off, push a little bit, and then power through. It may take time for that to happen. So don't think it'll happen tomorrow. You're just watching this line, keeping it on your radar. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Uh, Facebook. Um, here, this one's powering higher. Watch out for earnings, but this one's been doing well since, again, breaking those resistance lines, making nice new highs, looking good over 100, pretty good uh, movement. GoPro, we talked about this one on the short, and here with the earnings, um, yeah, this one's, I, I, I don't see a good future for GoPro, even though it, they make fantastic cameras. As far as a stock, as far as an investment, uh, based on what the action is today, um, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's definitely going to take a little bit of time. I don't see the uh, the value here. So you could see this one get back to, well, doing a calculation. This is uh, 56 points, let's say, give or take. 24 points. So taking it down, we can see something. Uh, 15 bucks, maybe, give or take. 15 bucks, maybe less, but who knows. Um, IBM, since uh, selling off on the earnings, you can see the stock continues to move lower on heavy volume. There it is. Earnings took it down right here on this bar in 16 million shares. We popped and tried to get a little bit higher with the people taking their profits. And then again, 15 million to the downside. So uh, you can see this long resistance and support line right here breaking again so this one's acting weak and uh, they've been talking about it and with the weakness the way it's showing its hand it's it's in the uh, downtrend right now so 120 110 might be a value buy for some people but um, you know it'll play around here for a little bit still it doesn't happen overnight and uh, buffalo wild wings earnings took this stock down here we got about 30, 40 points uh, coming off, 33 from here, and we had 54 from the highs. So uh, this one again, from the highs, sell-off, major, uh, that usually means a little bit of trouble coming as well. So could it come back to that 120? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, will it? We'll see. Time will tell. But um, but with that speed, when things are cutting, when things are moving fast, how fast does it uh, take to stop a car moving five miles an hour versus a car moving a hundred miles an hour and thirty three dollar move to the downside is a fast move that's a fast move uh, think of that as going um, 180 miles an hour in a car so it takes a lot of energy to stop that move um, of course you may get a little bit of breaks uh, meaning you may get a little pop up here and then again a sell-off but uh, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of people to step in to stop that moving moving train, moving car, uh, moving airplane, whatever analogy you want to use. McDonald's, we talked about this one the previous week, still continues to move nicely today, a little bit of a down day, but you can see we had a little pop, a couple days of pop, pull back a little, and again a pop. So uh, it's pushing up, pushing well to the upside, moving exactly as it should. Um, it's uh, holding up well. And CMG, again, we talked about this one, upward trending support line break. Um, as we broke that, exactly like from the technical analysis course, if you got the blue course, the technical analysis course, the big one um, with hours of training, then this is classic move. Hold up, hold up, pushing down. And even on this last day right here, uh, before it broke even lower, it's already breaking it. And then what do you think is going to happen with earnings? What do you think is going to happen with earnings? People know. And, you know, a lot of people say oh, they don't they don't know about earnings. The big boys don't know where the operators don't know. Of course, they know. They know more than what we know. And they're not supposed to know. They're not supposed to know. And everybody says they're, you know, oh, no, no, they're, they don't know. But they know. So why do you think it's been pushing lower? And then what do we get? Another major sell-off. And then play around a little bit here, lower, lower, pop. And again, we continue lower for a few days. One day out of seven and come on. So they know this game is uh, is different. You gotta you have to watch the bigger picture and understand the bigger picture behind things. It's all about knowing and understanding your mentality and and um, and your psychology and really how how things play out. So here's Netflix popping again, coming in this level. I was I was looking for it to roll over, but you know they're holding it up. So that's what's happening. But Looking at the bigger picture and looking at 
how things move, how things behave. It's really about knowing and understanding your own mentality, knowing your hurdles, your problems, your obstacles, which is really the focus of this week's recap. And what I wanted to share with you is that, you know, most people in the world, and I would say the majority probably, and if I was to pick a number, I'd say 30 to 40% of the people is they don't really know or understand what's happening under own under their own skin or surface and maybe they know but they are not aware of it and even if they are aware of it they aren't able to make the changes or adjustments because first you have to be number 1 you have to be aware of what's going on within you And then you also need to be able to make the changes and adjustments. So for example, if you're looking to lose weight, and let's just say you're 700 pounds, I'm just throwing a figure out there. If you're 700 pounds, you might not even be aware that you need to lose weight. I I know this may sound extreme, but it might be the mentality is not even there yet for you to lose weight. Now, if you're 1,000 pounds, you, you know, you might say, hey, now it's a wake-up call. Now you might be aware of it, but you might be to the point where you can't lose that weight because you just physically can't. You might need to go to a doctor and so forth. So the earlier you can hit these points, then you can do something about it. And the same thing in trading. So if you're at 250 pounds and you're not aware that you need to lose weight, you still have some cushion or room that, okay, well, if I'm at 275, 290, now I probably need to lose some weight, you know, based on your figure and so forth, uh, you know, based on what a doctor says and evaluates for you. But you might start now saying, okay, now I'm aware that I need to lose some weight. And uh, and then after you get to this point, you actually have to make the changes. You have to do the actions. And most people, they don't even get to the action part. They don't, they're not in the awareness part. They they only they 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 have that lack of the mentality of awareness to be able to get to that point. They're not honest with themselves, saying, "Hey, okay, well, I I don't really need to lose weight. I'm good. I'm good. I feel good. I feel fine." So if you get to a certain level, you need to start being aware of these things. And then you need to take action. And action is a whole nother step beyond that, beyond the awareness. And I'm just trying to simplify this down. There's going to be little sub-steps within this whole process. And I'm not looking to nitpick anybody on on their weight, on their uh, sex, on their the type of things that they like, that they don't like, where they like to spend their money, where they don't like to spend their money. It's all just about using it as an example. It's all just about giving you an, a perspective. So for example, let's do another one. So let's talk about um, the mentality of going to the grocery store. So for me, Looking at overall being aware of what's in the grocery store, I'm I'm looking at things. And for me, the way I see things is when I walk into a grocery store or a store in general looking to shop and buy food and products, I'm looking and I'm seeing that 90% of the things in there are pretty much junk, you know, and then the top 10% is what I want, is what I want to fuel my body. I want clean energy. I want the best gasoline for my body, for my brain, for my heart, for my health. So I tend to stick within the greens, within the fresh area, within the fresh aisle. Anything that's typically packaged, anything that's in the aisles is typically prepackaged, and it's typically not as good and healthy. But most people aren't aware of that or we've been trained by marketing through uh, consumers, um, uh, advertising, and just a lot of other things saying, well, it's not as bad or not as in moderation. And you, you may say and you may argue that, that, okay, th- those things are okay to some level, but if I want the best of the best, if I want things to go smoothly to the next level, if I'm always looking to grow, if I'm always looking to improve, then I want the best things that I can possibly get. And for me, then, I will stay in that 10% of those greens or 10% in the healthy area of the store. 
One of the great things um, or sayings that applies in this con context is um, 90% of the things are mental and 10% are external. Or the other way you could look at it is 10% uh, of the things that happen to you are just things that happen to you and 90% of the effect or the result is how you react to those things. So um, you, you start looking at all these things, the 90-10 principle, 80-20 principle, and there's so many principles that you start flashing around and you really don't know which one to follow. For me, um, for me personally, I just keep it very simple. I just look at, okay, be better and just try and do the best that I can do. Um, so if I just remember, okay, be better, then I know that, okay, let me just continue to make improvements. And that just be better, be better as a human, be better as a person, be kinder, just continue to be better, continue to improve. And when you start looking at stocks and how this all applies to the stock market, okay, you know, taking things from the grocery store, from the weight, taking things from your actions, reactions, the awareness, putting all these things together, you're just looking to get through that awareness part. And with the stock market, you build so much energy initially. You build a lot of energy from your knowledge and education. And when you have this knowledge and education, you build more confidence. And there's a lot of hurdles that'll come up along your trades. There's a lot of issues, uh, trades that don't work out. And it really sucks your mentality. It sucks your um, energy from your psychology. And it really sometimes makes you feel down. Back when I first started trading, I don't know, probably many of you have heard the story through one of the courses or the books. I mean, I started trading probably when I was 13, 14 years old. I mean, I, I didn't really, really trade there on my own, but I started trading very young. Um, my mom was doing a lot of the choosing of the stocks, and she wasn't as computer savvy, so I actually executed a lot of the trades. I looked at charts. So I started st um, studying and stumbling across other methods and strategies to, you know, trade in the market because, you know, she asked me to put uh, money into this stock or buy this stock or buy this position. But, you know, I just slowly started dabbling into it. And as things accelerated, you know, I started putting in my own money under her account and made trades and executed them. And at that time, I was already running a successful web development business. And that was when there weren't a lot of web businesses out there. And from there, actually, I if many of you read some of my books or my stories, I actually sold one of my blog businesses for over a hundred thousand dollars there, and uh, took the money and continued to invest it in the market. So that's where I got a lot of the money behind uh, investing, trading, and there's a lot of websites and successful things that I did over the years that led me to that point. But it's a stepping stone that not every trade, not every business decision, not every uh, every single action that you do is going to work out. Um, even on a day to day basis. Basis, even on a life uh, basis, there's going to be hurdles and steps and challenges that you have to overcome. And some of those, um, you know, come in very different ways. Some of those are uh, physical. Some of those are physical that you actually can feel, hold, touch. And a lot of those are mental. And the physical ones are usually a lot easier to take care of because if the physical ones, you can go ahead and solve them through money, then you don't have as big of a problem. But the mental ones, the mental problems are very difficult to solve because you can't solve it with money. So for example, if someone gets in a car accident, or let's just say I get into a car accident, I can go ahead and just purchase a brand new car. Money will solve this problem. And it's very simple. As long as I wasn't hurt and everything like that, um, I can easily replace a car. I just go ahead, buy a new car. I'm done. I'm ready. I'm set. And I'm good to go. Mental problems, on the other hand, if the psychology of me getting in a car accident now, I don't want to drive anymore. This is going to really impact me for the rest of my life. And in the market, if you have those bad trades, killer trades that really drain you and you don't even want to put on a trade, then you won't be able to continue and progress further. In the long scheme of things, if you look at the long term, you have to learn that you have to continue to put on trades. You have to continue to be active, continue to trade in that in the long term, 
you'll be ahead. But you're going to make some stupid decisions. You're going to make some decisions that aren't in your favor and things to learn from. Just like when you're younger and when you're driving, you need to learn that you can't be speeding if you got a speeding ticket before or you shouldn't be. And then you need to learn that you shouldn't be driving recklessly or running through red lights because accidents can happen. And if you've ever been in an accident or you've ever been pulled over, then maybe the consequences were minimal. So if it's just a $200 ticket at that time, you might have paid $200, $400, whatever the ticket charge was. And then maybe three months you were driving carefully and then six months later you were back to doing what you were doing. Now in the market, you technically can do the same thing. It technically does happen because of just our own mentality. What happens is we get into trades, then we get into it, we feel comfortable, we start putting on positions more than what we should, and then we get big spikes, huge spikes, like for example in Netflix, in Apple, whatever, 30-point spikes, they take us out, and then you say, oh, I won't do that again, or oh, I won't turn, I won't trade earnings again, you know, and then... Time goes on, you start making some more money, you make more successful trades, and then you get away from those rules, just like you get away from following the speed limit or, you know, running yellow lights. And then, boom, again, stock goes down 30 points and you're out $3,000 or $30,000, depending on how many shares you have. So it, it really drains you mentally. And a lot of that has to do with discipline. And if you can be disciplined, disciplined too, stick to your strategy, it'll keep you out of trouble. If you can be disciplined to be aware of your surroundings, of how you're acting, how you're behaving, if you can be disciplined that, hey, I'm not really kind to those people next door. Let me go over and say hi. Or, hey, I haven't been really a good neighbor. Or, hey, you know, let me go and pick up the phone and just see how this friend is doing, even though maybe they didn't call me for their birthday, you know, uh, or for my birthday, you know, let me just go ahead and pick up the call, the, the phone and just reach out to them and be the better person because you're aware of that. You let your ego go and you continue to try and become better. And in the market, you just try and continue to be better. So I know that there's phrases and discussions that people say, okay, don't try, don't try. You just need to take action, but just a word, just using a word that, You continue to make improvements, but you fine-tune things and you fine-tune your strategy and you fine-tune your positions to continue to be better and better and better to the point where these hurdles, problems, and obstacles, you're always aware of them. And one of the best ways that I found that works really well, and um, a guy by the name of Dan Sheridan always talks about it, is that... Every time you have a position, you go ahead and towards the end of the day, you do a fire drill and you say, what if that stock jumped five points? What if it dropped five points? What if that stock went up 10%? What if it dropped 10%? What if the moon turns blue? What if, you know, what if something happens? Because in the market, it's really about being prepared for those unexpected situations. It's about being prepared for situations that may not be to your favor. And if you can prepare for those in advance and manage your risk, then it'll keep you out of some major and dangerous trouble. But if you're the type of person that's always jumping in and out of things, not really being aware of what you're doing, just kind of looking for a quick buck, kind of looking for a quick stock to trade, looking to make a few quick dollars, not really understanding strategies, not really understanding patterns, technical analysis, how stocks move, how stocks behave, volatility, learning about all these different things. If you're not aware of these things, then you're just going to be hopping in and out of trades and trying to get lucky. I mean, in the end, that's really what it will come down to. Whereas if you combine your strategy saying, okay, for every time that stock goes up $1, I will take off 25% of my shares. Then the next time stock goes up a dollar, you go ahead and peel off another 25% of those shares. So you're constantly taking profits in the strength. And then if the stock drops $2, you're out completely and that'll keep you profitable. So you have to start coming up with things that really keep you profitable, that work for you, because there's no real golden magic bullet rule system for everybody. 
Everybody has different risk tolerances. Everybody has different goals in the market. And depending on how things move, behave, act, you might see something that's a lot different than what everybody else sees. That doesn't mean your analysis is wrong. It also depends on the time frame, the time frame that you're looking to achieve in the future. So for some people, they may invest in a stock at a $10 share a $10 per share price. And for for them, it's fine holding on to a $10 stock that may not move to $20 or $30 for 10 or 20 years. So you have to define these things. And sometimes these mentalities really, um, really just suck you dry because once you execute a bad trade, when you execute a really bad trade, sometimes you just don't want to trade. And when you don't want to trade, it's going to be more difficult for you to get back in. So start slowly. So one of the things that I would advise, it's kind of like working out or training. When I used to teach martial arts and um, a lot more was um, we always started with a 15-minute uh, lesson or, or a 25-minute lesson when you're just learning to to train and get back into things. And then you pick it up. Then you go to uh, two days a week, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Then you go to uh, three day a week, one hour. Then you go to four day a week and maybe do an hour and a half or two hour lesson. So you start continuing to build, build, build um, all these things, all this endurance. But if you're simply just uh, trying to do things very quick and just jump back in trading a thousand shares, this is really where it's going to be really dangerous. Uh, because what, what happens is then if you take a major loss, if you take a huge loss from a stock and you didn't do the right things, it's going to be very difficult for you to be consistent with an even larger position. And this is where people get burned. This is where people lose incredibly big is because they then double down. Then they try to go ahead and add even more on the next position to make their money back. And that's where things become very dangerous because you're not clear-minded, you're not trading properly, you're not seeing something correct in the market. You need to take a step back, evaluate things, trade lighter, and get back into the swing of things or get back into a rhythm and then continue to build, build your strategy, build your awareness, build your action steps, and you'll grow. But you have to keep doing it. I mean, if you missed the first five baskets when you played basketball and you stopped right there, then you could never become a professional. You could never continue. You have to keep going. And even professionals miss baskets in basketball. They, but you have to keep going. You have to keep shooting. You have to keep moving and developing your craft, developing your techniques, developing your mindset, your mentality. It's all about just moving forward and just becoming better. So be better, whether that's in the market, in regular life, contributing to other people, helping other people, giving them an extra dollar, giving them an extra hour of your time. Just continue to be better, evolve, because hurdles, obstacles, problems, they'll come. But the way to overcome them is baby steps, little steps, step by step. um, Just continue to move forward. All right. I hope this recap was a little helpful. I know we didn't talk a lot about stocks. It's more of an audio, little helpful, motivational guide, hopefully, for you. Some of those of you that are stuck, just continue, continue to move, continue to learn. Learning sometimes will give you that energetic boost when you learn and get a new insight putting things together. We got two main courses that I still want to release in the stock market. And then after that, really, we're going to take a break with uh, course material. But after these two courses, especially after the, um, the, the final course of how to enter, uh, manage, uh, and exit your trades, after that course is released, everything should, should come to the light. Everything should be coming together for you. So we got that one major course coming out there next year sometime of how to enter, manage your position, how to exit your position, putting everything together, everything together. And then really you should be rock solid in this. And, you know, you'll have that um, education, but you're going to have to be aware of your own mentality. You're going to have to be aware of your hurdles of what you're doing. Are you over trading, under trading? 
Are you, um, you know, getting in too late, getting in too early? And then you'll have to make adjustments. And those are some things that, you know, a lot of people can't help you with. You're going to have to be aware of this and be more open-minded to those things. Um, so don't let your ego cloud your judgment because that's the only way to succeed in this business is to be honest with where you're at in your life, in your trades, what's happening. Um, and that's why a lot of people just fail at the market is because they can't be honest with themselves of where they are, what they're doing wrong, because it's just just an ego thing. So get rid of that ego, get rid of that that negative vibe and energy from all parts of your life, and just go out, contribute to other people, help them out, everything else, make it flow, be better, be kinder, continue to evolve, and you'll get there. You'll get there. All right, thanks for joining me. Uh, should be back to normal schedule next week. Love and appreciate all your emails. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a tweet uh, regarding if you want these um, recaps to be converted to a podcast or an audio format. We'll be glad to do that for you um, within the next, you know, as time moves on, we'll, we'll go ahead and put it on the schedule. And uh, thanks again for joining me. Truly appreciate all the fellowship, um, the lovely messages that you guys send me uh, from the little gifts that I get. I mean, it just just hearing from you, commenting from you, it's just wonderful. So, you know, keep doing it. Keep on going. Keep moving. And uh, this business just takes time and you'll get there. All right. Thanks again. And I'll see you next week.